you have spent any time at all on the internet over the past few years and have even a passing interest in politics and current affairs and understanding why the world is the way it is, you'll probably have come across some things, some articles and debates on so uh, on bubbles, on the idea that we all live in bubbles now, um, especially on the internet, and the fact that this is you know very bad for democracy. So the idea is that on Twitter and on Facebook and other places, we've kind of surrounded ourselves with people who sound like us and who look like us and who agree with us. Um, and that is a bad thing because that is not how society is meant to function. And I'm actually here to argue the complete opposite, which is that I think we need more bubbles and the internet has kind of mushed all of us together and we're just all together all the time. And that is fundamentally harmful to us and to society at large. And I think that works on the personal and kind of, you know, on the grander political scale. So, for example, if you look at progressive campaigns, I think the reason why, you know, the so-called culture wars effectively happen is that people should be able to talk to their own side in private and then have quite different debates in the sort of, you know, public arena. So be there on anything from Black Lives Matter to feminism to trans rights, etc. There are, you are always going to say slightly different things depending on who you're talking to, because if you're talking to people who are also campaigners, you will discuss quite radical ideas perhaps, that you know, things you want to happen in 5, 10, 15 years down the line. If you're arguing with people you're trying to convince, you're saying, actually, you know what, we're, we're just trying to convince you on these first few small steps for now, and then, and then we'll get to the rest later. On things like Twitter, everyone sees everything, and so it becomes impossible because each side thinks, oh god, you know, these revolutionaries want to completely change society tomorrow, which is not the case. And I think political parties as well suffer from this because a lot of what they do is effectively managing a message. And at election time, I think an interesting thing is if you're, let's say, an MP or high profile campaigner, you will talk to your members and say, actually, you know, seats X, Y and Z, we're about to win them. You know, if you go and knock on some more doors, we will be able to win those seats with your help. But then you need to be able to turn around to the media and say, actually, you know, we don't think we're going to win those seats. And if we do, it'll be grand because, you know, that then if you do win them, it'll make it look like a bigger victory. That can't really happen in, anymore on because of the Internet. Again, because everyone, you know, because those journalists and those campaigners share those same spaces. But even I think on the personal on the personal note as well, it's not healthy, I believe, to have, let's say, Instagram uh, accounts or Facebook accounts or Twitter accounts, especially because they're more likely to be public, where, you know, like, you're sort of meant to be yourself and that's the only way you can actually connect with people and make friends and be interesting. But at the same time, any future employer you may have can check this and think, actually, you know, this is public, therefore it represents their professional persona. Um, and, and that is not, you know, that the, the, there used to be limitations between workspaces, for example, um, and personal spaces, which do not exist anymore. Um, so yeah, so I think I am basically here to argue for more bubbles and I think it is not something that we can change completely overnight. However, I, I, I believe that the internet was at its best when it was mostly made of corners and niches and also places that were perhaps semi-private to semi-public depending on how you look at it. So be that blogs or forums or even smaller places that you could not just find sort of just about anywhere. And so. Maybe that means we should go back to being semi-anonymous. Maybe that means that we should leave the big platforms and go back to, again, quite small sort of like places that were more related to interest. So we can once again be different things to different people because that is one of the fundamental things about human nature, which I think social media has robbed us of. Um, but yes, so that is why I believe that we do not live in bubbles, but we should. <laughs>